This earnings call audio is presented to you by Alpha Street. Do visit us at www.alphastreet.com slash India. Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to our system's Q4 and your 2021 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Kumar. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nirav. Good morning to all. On behalf of our systems, I welcome all participants to quarter four and year 2021 earning conference call. We hope all of you are doing well, staying safe and healthy. We have senior management of our system with us in this call. We will start the call with opening remarks on the performance of the company by Dr. Rekhi, followed by financial overview by Mr. Nunn and business overview by Mr. Avirad. Thereafter, we will have a closer statement by Dr. Rekhi. Subsequently, we will open up for a Q&A session. Before I hand over, let me read out the customary disclaimer statement on behalf of the company. Investors are cautioned that this presentation contains certain forward-looking statements that involve risk and uncertainties. Company undertakes no obligation to update or revise any such statement. These statements may undertake revision because of new information, future event, or otherwise. Actual results, performance, achievement could differ from those expressed or implied in such forward-looking statement. With this, I am handing over to Dr. Reiki for his opening comment. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Kumar. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being part of this uh, investor call. I trust all of you and your loved ones are safe and keeping well. The company has done well for vaccination for employees and their families. Safety and well-being of our employees is paramount to us in evaluating our options for working from office or hybrid working in a phased manner. The technology companies are continuing to be benefited by renewed focus towards adaptation of digital technologies post this pandemic. The businesses have accepted this new normal and started exploring new products, business models to convert these challenges into opportunities. I'm extremely proud of our systems team for delivering another outstanding performance for the year 2021. With this, I would like to present an overview of our systems for the benefit of all those who are joining us in this conference for the first time. Our systems was established in 1993 in California as a software engineering company and is now spread across three continents with 18 development and service centers worldwide. Our system delivers digital transformation services with new types of innovation and creativity to businesses in various industries technology, telecom, digital media, healthcare, life sciences, finance and insurance, retail and e-commerce. Our deep industry domain knowledge combined with our expertise in big data, advanced analytics, AI mobility, IoT, RPA and cloud, help in transformation of businesses in this digital age. Being the year end, we'll emphasize more on the yearly performance. During last year, we have reported record revenue of rupees 1156 crores, <coughs> which is US dollars 156 million. The year on year growth was 31%. This robust performance is on the back of good traction towards our product engineering and digital offerings, deepened relationships with our existing customers, along with the decent flow of sizable deals. We have also improved 
our yearly EBITDA margins to 14% compared to 13.3% last year. In absolute terms, it has increased by more than 38% against last year. I believe there is still scope of improving our margins as utilization was just modest this year, last year. We kept higher talent pool to cater to growth along with handling attrition challenges. We are still to reap the full benefits of our investments in sales, pre-sales and newer technologies. These investments will help to generate high margin growth in coming periods. Profit after tax was 141 crores as against rupees 82 crores last year. The year on year growth of more than 70%. For the quarter four 2021, we reported revenues of rupees 328 crores with 13.7% EBITDA. The year on year revenue growth was 39%. During Q4, our margins were impacted by salary raises and comparatively lower offshore utilization. But it lays down a good foundation for a strong financial year 2022. We have a robust balance sheet with shareholder funds of Rs. 460 crores and net cash balances of Rs. 277 crores to support liquidity and growth. We have served $40 million plus customers, including six customers contributing US dollar 3 million plus revenues. We added 30 key customers, including eight customers having potential to be in the USD million dollar league. We added net 850 plus technical associates during the year. I will now hand over to our CFO, Nansardana, to provide a detailed financial analysis. Thank you, Dr. Ricky. Good morning to all. Thank you, everybody, for attending this call. The presentation, which has already been shared, gives detail of both quarter four and year 2021 performance. I'll quickly cover quarter four and then move to yearly numbers. Revenue for the quarter was rupees 328.6 crores or $44 million. Quarter on quarter increase of 7.5%. It is mainly due to volume growth. The gross margin was 34.8%, which was lesser by 285 basis points compared to last quarter, mainly due to impact of salary increases, which are effective October 2021. Lesser utilization as we kept certain talent pool to offset attrition and to take care of growth opportunities. Also, there were two lesser were billable days in quarter four. As the expenses also increase in absolute terms, due higher spend on recruitment, sales and marketing initiative, although it was lesser in percentage terms by 60 basis points. Resultant EBITDA was 13.7% compared to 16% last quarter. It is as a result of a gross margin reduction and increase in HGNAs. Net profit after tax was Rs. 32.8 crores or $4.4 million compared to Rs. 37.6 crores or $5.9 million last quarter. Now, I'll give detailed overview of yearly numbers. As Dr. Ricky said, revenue for the year was record rupees 1155.6 crores or $156.5 million compared to rupees 880.6 crores or $119.2 million last year. The revenue grew at 31% year on year. This was an all round growth where each business unit and geography has contributed, especially the robust performance by technology and digital practice in US and Canada. We added 30 key accounts during the year along with further deepening our relationship with existing customers. At quarter four run rate, we are at USD 176 million annualized run rate now. Our present sales pipeline is encouraging. We are strengthening our delivery team and infrastructure to cater to growth opportunities and hybrid working from office in the near future. 
getting down to gross margin it was at 35.7% in the current year compared to 36.6% last year a reduction of 90 basis points reduction in gross margin is mainly due to impact of salary raises and lesser utilization average rupee against usd was stable so did not get any major benefit from rupee depreciation this year 2021 getting down to sgna's expense line sgna expenses have increased by rupees 45.2 crores it was rupees 251 crores in 2021 as again 2005.8 crores last year in percentage term the sgna were 21.7% this year compared to 23.4% last year so we got the advantage of higher growth in reducing sgna in percentage terms however the main reason for absolute increase in gdp <coughs> sgna was due to addition of new sales and pre sales staff increased digital marketing spend and recruitment expenses we have optimized the saving on account of lesser sales travel and office maintenance etc towards digital marketing and recruitment initiatives to fuel the future growth abida in 2021 was rupees again record 161.5 crores or 21.9 million dollar compared to rupees 116.8 crores or 15.8 million dollar last year as a percentage of revenue abida was 13.7% in 2021 compared to 13.27% last year we were able to get some margin improvement last year despite handling the challenges for attrition and mutual utilization with continued growth momentum we are optimistic of further improving margin in coming quarters getting down to depreciation the total expense was rupees 27.7 crores compared to rupees 25.6 crores last year interest expense is rupees 4.9 crores in 2021 compared to rupees 5.7 crores last year other income in 2021 was rupees 41.2 crores compared to rupees 12.5 crores last year this year we had an exchange gain of rupees 8.7 crores compared to rupees 3.3 crores last year further the other income comprises of interest income of rupees 7.1 crores this year compared to rupees 6.6 crores last year exchange gains are due to mark to market gains on restatement of outstanding forward crores other income also includes rupees 22.4 crores as a result of forgiveness of covid stimulus loan received in usa last year during the year 2021 the average rate for usd and euro were rupees 73.83 and rupees 87.32 respectively as against closing rate for usd and euro of rupees 74.34 and 84.21 respectively these are the two main currencies for our system as at the year end we have total forward cover of 32.7 million dollars with average rate of rupees 77.22 and euro cover of 2.10 million with average rate of rupees 91.47 which have already been marked to market at closing rate of 31st december our tax expense was rupees 28.6 crore in 2021 as against tax of rupees 14.4 crore last year effective consolidated tax percentage for 2021 is 17% as against 15% during last year our effective tax rate has increased as one of our sdg unit has completed first 5 years of full tax benefit and moved into 50% tax benefit category net profit after tax was rupees 141.4 crores or 19.1 million dollars compared to rupees 81.8 crore or 11 million dollar last year eps for the year was rupees 11.85 compared to rupees 6.8 crore last year getting down to the set side in the balance sheet total receivable at the end of december 31st 2021 were rupees 178 crores compared to rupees 131.3 crores at the end of last year the receivable in terms of ds over 50 days compared to 53 days last year our net cash and bank balance as at december 31 2021 is rupees 277.4 crores compared to rupees 303.1 crores at the end of december last year we have been constantly generating cash from the business during the year our system has done shareholder distribution in the form of dividend and buyback which has impacted the cash 
our system shareholder fund was rupees 460.3 crores at the end of December 21, compared to rupees 426.8 crores at the end of last year. We have a strong balance sheet to support liquidity and growth. With that, let me hand over to Aviraj Ji for review of operations. Thank you, Nandi. Thanks, everyone, for being on the call. I hope everybody is doing good. We continue to focus on digital technology and digital transformation. This strategy has helped us to get our momentum. We'll give you a brief flavor of our global operation. The digital transformation continued to be the focus for us on select key vertical like technology, telecom, finance, insurance, healthcare, life science, retail, and e-commerce. Our digital transformation offering includes cloud analytics, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data and speech analytics, so robotics, process automation, IoT, Salesforce. These continue to be our arrowheads for growth. On cloud, we work for all the leading platforms such as Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. We are an advanced partner with Amazon, gold partner of Salesforce. We see significant traction in cloud space. And with a high growth coming from this area, from existing clients as well as new prospects that we talk to. On analytics, uh, we see high growth in MLA, AI, data, speech analytics. We are currently serving many key clients in this space. We had eight key wins during this year. The brief key wins are under product life cycle, a Canadian leading platform provider of media and entertainment industry has engaged our system to cloudify to Amazon Cloud and enhance its product to improve efficiency and user experience. Another is the US-based public security solution provider. They have partnered with our system to, to provide to digital transform and re-architect their product to address enhanced market needs. Another one is a global automobile company subsidiary in US. They are leading supply chain integration partner. They have Engage our system to digitally transform its flagship product and enhance its functionality. Another one under product life cycle is one of the global leaders in cruise line has partnered with our system to modernize and their enterprise integration along with digital transformation initiatives for their order management application. In Southeast Asia, one of the largest aluminum extraction Manufacturing in Asia has engaged our system to implement in four cloud suites for industrial uh, ERP sightline and other solutions to automate their finance, sales, and distribution operation for the APAC region. In terms of our headcount, we have increased from 3,103 in year 2020 to 4,035 in year 21. Added 850 plus technical associates to support a strong sales funnel. Utilization decreased from 77.5 in Q3 to 77.1 in Q421 as we are still keeping some bandwidth to handle near-term attrition and growth in the business. On a yearly basis, uh, geography basis, North America contributes 68.9, Europe 13.5, Southeast Asia 14.5, and rest of the world 3.1. On yearly basis, client concentration, top 10 client uh, contribution is 24.2, is the largest client 7.1. With a brief overview, I will hand over back to Dr. Reiki for his closing comment. Over to you, sir. Reiki ji, over to you. Uh, thank you, Avirag. Let, let me sum up. Our performance during the financial year 2021 was remarkable. It has laid a robust foundation for years to come as we are moving towards unleashing next-gen digital revolution. We continue to invest in sales, pre-sales, <clears throat> digital marketing, expertise in newer technologies. These are helping us to bring large digital transformation projects. The business outlook continues to be positive with a strong demand. We are further extending our infrastructure in SEZ in line with our sales funnel. We endeavor to utilize our balance sheet to support operations and future growth. 
Further, we are committed to expand, <clears throat> expanding our margins by improving the realization rates, targeting bigger deal sizes, efficient operations, coupled with revenue growth. That brings us to the end of our presentation today, and we will hand you back to the organizers for your questions and answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer <clears throat> session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The first question is from, li from the line of Namrita Sarda, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Um... I'm Namrita Sada and I'm an individual investor, like you just mentioned. Uh, so I want to congratulate you and your team for the revenue, amazing revenue. And from an investor perspective, yes, I've been investing since the stock price is around uh, 85 to 90. And I've seen good returns going uh, straight up to 350, 354, uh, where I kind of exited a bit. But I'm um, still holding on to the stock. I strongly believe in their organization. And uh, I want my quest last five years have been phenomenal for the company. And yes, the revenues have doubled. So um, when can, my first question is, when can we expect to double the current revenue? Uh, keeping in mind the current geopolitical situation, are we seeing some serious pressure from European markets? And then what geography will you be focusing next year for the group? Thank you, Namrata. Uh, good to see happy investor like you. So, uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, in the last four years, we have doubled our revenue. Now, when we will double, uh, presently we, are, we have done 156.5 million this year. And uh, on a quarterly run rate basis, if you see Q4, we did 44 million. So we are on a run rate basis close to 176 million. I mean, uh, that's the run rate. So definitely there will be some growth on that. So we feel good about uh, uh, the, the 2022, we feel will be good year. Now, I mean, the aim is to double this. We have 300 million company next uh, if not uh, two or three years' time, uh, but you see, we don't know. So if the demand environment and uh, supply constraints uh, uh, continues, uh, I mean, supply is there, I mean, we can double in next three years, hopefully. Coming on to your next question on this geopolitical situation, you see, Eastern Europe office are in Romania, Poland, and Moldova. I mean... Uh, as of now, we don't see, it seems that uh, this conflict will be restricted to Ukraine, Russia only, uh, but we don't know. I mean, we have to wait and watch. But otherwise, the European business is doing very well. Uh, they have grown close to 30% last year, and their pipeline is very strong. And uh, we are quite hopeful of uh, very good growth for this year otherwise. On the geography front, 70% of our revenue comes out of North America, around 15% from Europe, around 15% from Singapore, uh, Southeast Asia, sorry. So North America and European markets are doing well, and we want to grow in these markets, especially the Canada has done very well. So the plan is to expand more in North America and Western Europe. And hopefully, I think uh, there is a good demand environment. Rajiv, do you want to add anything? Uh, I want to add a little bit. Your, uh, no, 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 your question is very good. Uh, on the geopolitical situation, one is looking at the po uh, positive side of it. I think this will end very soon. You, wars cannot last for too long. Uh, but there's a sizable movement of uh, population from Ukraine to Romania and those countries. And as you probably know, today there's a talent shortage. And 
Ukraine has a fair amount of software engineers. We are hoping that uh, some amount, I'm looking for some positive in all of this, that some amount of software engineers will also be moving to Romania and Moldova, where we have our own offices. And that will uh, um, supply us more talent that is really needed. And if that happens, we will, we will be benefiting from that. But we do hope that this, uh, this war ends soon. Thank you. I think that answers my question. Thank you very much. Thank we you. all hope that the war ends soon. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sonal Menas from Princeton Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Sonal Menas, this side. Uh, I have two questions. First one is more around the macro. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Um, so the question, the question is around, uh, as you see the economy is open and the lockdowns uh, going away, uh, you see, do you see uh, any sign of slowdown or tapering in uh, general uh, digital ad ad adoption or uh, on the contrary, your company is relatively too small to actually get be affected by that at all if it is happening? So just wanted a bit of a subjective commentary on that. Uh, can I have a follow-on question? Uh, but we'll just pause. So now, uh, that's a, a good question. The demand for this is going to stay. Nowadays, there's a huge demand. I mean, uh, we are not able to... I, I think I'll ask Aviralji to maybe touch upon the demand environment and the supply situation. Aviralji, please. Sure, Nanji. Thank you. Uh, Sonal, like, you know, as we see, you know, 2020 was a year where businesses go down. 2020, they started recovery. And a lot of, there is a global shortfall of IT professionals. There is a demand surge. And I see at least for next couple of years, it is not going to go down. Like right now, the only challenge IT industry is having is a good experience manpower. I think the so demand, I think, is not a problem now. And we do not see... Uh, you know, demand tapering. Right now, companies, we including, are, are choosing order, what order to take, which customer to give priority. Right now, I mean, that time has never been there in the industry where we have to select which customer to serve, which order to pick, which we can deny. We are into that mode. So demand is going to stay for some time now. We do not see any anything going down in near future. So based on whatever you see in the market, you see this kind of a uh, uh, this kind of a demand scenario to persist for the next two three years at least. Is, is what your border, border assumption would be basically? Yes, I I think so. Yes. Okay. Um, second question, sir. Uh, just wanted to understand uh, like a target for next year if there is one. Uh, uh, if you can share. Uh, and the third question is, I think you, as you mentioned that you've done some senior leadership hiring in Q3 and Q4 just to ramp up and support the growth. So wanted to understand which verticals uh, have you uh, have you recruited people largely is this to fill some gap in a vertical uh, where uh, you were not uh, strong or uh, just, just a subjective commentary around that. So uh, help. So now, uh... We do not give any guidance. I mean, that has been our plan. But uh, as, I was, as I was referring to in the previous question answer, see, mm -hmm. we have done 44 million uh, for uh, Q4. Yes. Now, in Q1, uh, let me tell you, there are two lesser number of days. But in Q2 and Q3, there are three extra days. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 44 million into four is 176. And that's based on the existing revenue. Mm -hmm. Last year, the existing clients have grown. I mean, out of that 30% growth we have, close to 15-16% have come from existing customers, 15-16% have come from new customers. So, I mean, you can uh, calculate, but we feel quite positive about this year. I mean, I don't want to say, but 200 million doesn't seem to be difficult, but I don't want to give any guidance here. So that is one. Uh, Secondly, on the uh, margin also is one of the area where we want some improvement. We have done 14% here. We, we plan to, I mean, there are synergies. I mean, when growth happens, we will get a lot of synergies. 
this uh, last year utilization has not been very good because of attrition challenges and the hiring issues but we mm-hmm. see at least uh, at least 150 100 200 basis point improvement uh, so that uh, should kick in uh, as dns should sweat and all that uh coming on to the seniors i think uh, we have hired several domain specialists uh, during uh, last year and uh, we have utilized uh, whatever savings were coming to travel and all that in enhancing our domain specialties hiring more sales talent marketing more marketing initiatives we have used that to fuel the growth for the future and that's the result you have seen in 2021 and hopefully 2022 as well got it so, so the recruitment is pretty much like across the board there is no vertical gap to be plugged here. no no it's across the board our chosen verticals we are 60% of business comes out isc out of which 30% is in telecom around 10 12% healthcare mm-hmm. banking finance retail and market i think all have grown well this year there has been all down growth uh, 1 2% plus minus uh, something like that but otherwise all verticals have grown well sure sure So just if I could ask uh, another question, if I'm allowed to. Yes, sir. Yes. Sure. So uh, again, the subjective one. <laughs> if, uh, sorry. So if we take, let's say, last, if we take, let's say, uh, large orders or rather large customers, you would have uh, lost to competition in the last one to two years. Uh, just want to understand, uh, like, what would be the top of the reasons why we would have lost uh, certain. uh customers or certain new customers to competition uh and uh, what what is been the reason from a capability or uh, from from a internal working perspective uh just just want to understand that i mean so i honestly, think we have yeah 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 please go ahead avil ji so i can take on you know existing client our customer retention on repeat order is almost 90% plus so we do not leave new customer generally two reason prominently we lose a customer one maybe one is generally if there is a and a if a customer got acquired or merged with a entity or some company so they have another vendor or they are that remains the reason we you know we work and second if there is a customer there is a financial issue and then obviously we lose so these two remain prominent otherwise quality delivery service i don't think we we ever We have lost any customer. Maybe one or maybe there small one, but we do not lose there. Got it. We have not lost any major customer in last one year. Small plus minus may have happened, but I I don't think we have lost any. Uh, there may be some ramp downs and all that, but we are not losing major customer last year. But and sir, any new customer like for where you were bidding for where you lost to competition, just try to understand the capability of the company vis-a-vis competition there. If there is uh, anything uh, on that side, actually. So, nobody's won, sir. Nobody's won. Yeah, yeah. You see, yeah, you sometimes you lose orders, and that is always the case. A customer who is you know looking for RFP and bid, we actually do not try to sell short. sometime on price we do not want to win your order and sometimes you know companies try to underbid and do low bid you do not do underbid so on that count you do <coughs> otherwise you find that we are not a order or any bid is not in our domain we try to pass otherwise our winning ratio is very high and we may lose the order on price sometimes so we try to maintain our you know rate intact otherwise you know if we are uh, bidding a customer we generally we win so that is what i would say and, you know obviously there are competition some is still we do not have let us say embedded side there are different have good skill so we try to do because of those and we set a lot of the path actually we do not spend a lot of time on the where we do not have capability Okay, so you don't bet at all. There is no. Yeah, if you do not have capability, there is no point of wasting a lot of time and effort, and then you lose. So, so no point putting effort. Understand that, sir. Sure. Thank you a lot. That's it for my side. Thank you, sir. Thank you, participants. You may press star and one to ask question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question 
on the line of abhay jain from our systems please go ahead yeah hi team so good morning gentlemen congratulations for completing a fabulous year so i bought the shares of a company in 2019 when the share price was around 50 or so and it is sticking now somewhere between 2 and 20 now so congratulations to the team for giving shareholders great value to their investments so can you please explain and give the boost what where do you see our shares as in near future will it stay here for a while or it will be better to add one more question uh, the company has improved the ebitda margin significantly in these recent years can you please explain how the company has managed it and can it be improved for the thank 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 you thank you mr abey on the share price we have no control i mean uh, it uh, reached around 350 i think uh, two months before i mean as of yesterday it was close to 220 i think all it companies have fallen maybe due to general kind of uh, but i i i feel that uh, you know the stock market is something we cannot comment and uh, where the share price will be our job is to do performance we feel that uh, we have done well last year and we will be doing uh, well this year as well that is our conviction so so uh, so that is the answer on the uh, abida front uh, yes uh, i think uh, our abida four years before it used to be like uh, 7 8% today we are at 14% and i was referring in previous answer that uh, we have a plan i mean we we feel quite positive that we can improve it by another 100 to 200 basis point in fact 200 basis point is also not difficult but 100 is quite easy based on the volume growth um, you see last year what has happened is that rupee has remained almost flat so we have not got the advantage of rupee depreciation last year utilization was uh, uh, you know almost uh, same or little less because of that uh, hiring issues growth had the you know 30% growth had the and uh, and the industry you know that uh, last year the increments have been higher percentage we had given an additional increment in october so uh, so 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 to answer your question uh, we feel that uh, there is a scope to improve by uh, you know another 100 to 200 basis point and we also feel good that we are now double double a bit the percentage compared to last four years so i think we, we feel good about and quite positive over the future thank you yeah thank you abhi ji any follow up question No, thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Parasavan, you may press star and one to answer question. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask the question. The next question is from the line of Anubhav Mukherjee from Preston Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, am I audible? <laughs> yes. Yes, sir, you are. uh so what uh, attrition rate did you face in the recent quarter and how do you see the supply side situation again the attrition at project manager and above level is very less very very hardly i mean uh, any there is attrition but in the below level is in line with industry it used to be around to 14 15% but i think uh, close to 25% now so attrition has increased and uh, we are trying to kind of control it through better salaries you know better incentive schemes and better bonuses and all that but that is a challenge yes we are working on that okay and sir uh, what sort sort of wage hikes did you uh, have to take in the current year and can you compare it with uh, like historically how your wage hikes uh, rate so and uh, next year also what sort of uh, hike do you anticipate yeah tv wage hike we have done you see uh, let me uh, you know go back uh, in the history you know when the pandemic started in march 20 you know there was a lot of uncertainty so two years before i mean uh, uh, there was a lot of uncertainty and kind of we freeze the increment in march 20 and did not give increment between march 20 to Uh, you know august september 20 so this six month normally what happens is our increment cycle is every month a person who joins in march gets increment in march 
and all that. But a lot of uh, major chunks of employees get increment in January. That is our, uh, you know, the start of the year. So since in 2020, uh, we did not give increment. So in October, we gave good increment compared to uh, for those who did not get increment between March 20 to, to, to September 20. So that October 20 increment has again come in October 21. And we have given uh, that increment. So now majorly the increment happens uh, in January, uh, which has already happened for January 22. Also in October 21, we gave so that and percentage wise to answer your question, we have given at least four to five percent higher increment compared to what we used to give earlier. So to that extent, the increment cost is higher and uh, the, the impact uh, is uh, comparatively higher. But what happens is that we, we, we are pitching for higher bill rates. So we have got, uh, uh, you know, uh, we, are, we, are, we are requesting clients to bill rate and the response has been very good. Just to give you a ballpark, uh, you know, at least uh, we see that uh, we have uh, at least four to $5 million improvement in revenue we see through billing rate increase in 2022 that's our initial uh, you know uh, estimate and uh, it, it can increase more so we are trying to kind of compensate that to believe that increase and that will also help us in improvement of a bidda which i was just now asking in one of the other questions Good. and and what was your offshore uh, revenue contribution in the current quarter Offshore is very high. I think 12 to 70, 71, 72 percent is offshore and 28, 29 percent is offshore. Okay. And uh, has that seen a like uh, considerable bump up in the last seven, eight quarters? I think it has more or less remained stable. I think uh, maybe uh, between, I think seven, seven eight quarters, it, will have, it, it would have been 3, 4 percent. More and more business is being shifted to offshore where the margins are high and it helps us in improvement of our profitability and which has been the trend in last uh, two, three years as you are seeing. So at a while, I don't have the exact number, but it would have increased at least four, five percent in last, uh, you know, seven, eight quarters. Yes, sir. And do you see any signs of that when you're working and... Uh, oh, no, no. That be I think okay. we are focusing on offshore and there is a lot of, uh, you know, shortage of talent in US and all that. So a lot of work is being shifted. So there is, a, uh, you know, the, 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 the supply constraint in US as well. We feel that uh, uh, offshore will be, uh, it will towards the offshore and uh, the margins are much better in offshore as you know. Sure, sir. Thanks, that's all for Thank you. Participant, you must have started and want to answer question. You may close if there are no other questions. So we don't have any other questions. Okay, you may close. So would you like to make any closing comments? Yeah, Dr. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for attending this uh, uh, investor call and uh, uh, that brings us to the end of our presentation and keep safe and healthy thank you very much thank you thank you very much on behalf of our systems that concludes this conference thank you for joining us you may now disconnect your mind. thanks for listening to this earnings call presented to you by alpha street now don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon for notifications do also visit us at www.alphastreet.com/india